Alrighty, good evening, everybody. So we're having some, we're still having some big movements in Bitcoin. I mean, uh, there's still a lot of volatility. Kind of wanted to go over a couple things, and uh, basically, we had this nine um, on the daily back on the twentieth before Christmas. We were in this channel that started to develop. Um, we had the green two close above the green green one, which closed above the nine. That's bullish. Um, I can move this out of the way. That target was 25,000. Let's see. Yeah, that target was 25,000. I believe. Pretty sure that's what it was. All right, that target was here. Yeah, that target was a little bit over 25,000. We went above that. Um, we had a new all time high at 28,387. We produced a reversal candle. Um, we didn't get much of a drop. Even it, it, I mean, the drop pretty much happened all in that day. So we had the high to the low, 9.2%. Like I said, I was expecting 15 to 25% drops. I'm still expecting that. Just this rally might not be over. Um, yesterday... Um, so the days for Bitcoin start um, for if you're Central Standard Time, it's six o'clock. Uh, so whenever I say yesterday, I mean um, the new day. the The new day started at six o'clock today, um, and uh, so the day starts <laughs> at six, ends at six. So whenever I say the day before, that's that's what I'm kind of referencing. But anyway, so <clears throat> yesterday. Or earlier today, uh, that whole day that from the high to the low was 5.7% drop. Um, and then we started seeing some movement towards the evening around 3 o'clock. And if you look at the hourly, it told you to get in on our 30 MA right here. Um, you could have waited. You had a green 2 above a green 1. So that would have been, um, if you would have waited for the close... You'd be up, well, that's not, not nothing crazy, 3%. Um, but what you have to start noticing, and what we didn't have in the last cycle, was uh, what's becoming more common are 500 to $1,000 days. Um, if we go back in the previous 2017 cycle, let me turn this down so that it's not as um, congested. And this is a Fibonacci retracement, so... I'll talk about that in a second. So here, what we saw was, even on these run-ups, we saw like uh, $300 days. Those were big days. This one was a pretty big candle. That's $600, uh, $700 day. And then towards the end, we started getting these $1,000 days. I think this one was right at 1000 December 1st. And then we had a $2,000 day, $3,000 day. So what I'm expecting towards the end of this cycle, and we're so early, I'm talking about the end of this cycle, but we're just at the beginning. So now, <clears throat> since price is so much higher uh, than than it was, you know, in 2017, we're getting whenever we get pr price swings, we're seeing, you know, two thousand dollar days, and they're coming more common. So here's a nineteen hundred dollar day, fourteen hundred dollar day. Here was a almost a thousand dollar day. We had thousand almost seventeen hundred so this is gonna be that's gonna be more common these thousand dollars five hundred to maybe two thousand dollar days <clears throat> towards the end of the cycle I'm the very first day that we get a ten thousand dollar day uh is gonna be a signal that hey we might be getting close to the top uh but that we don't have to start talking about that now um I just want to kind of point that out so yeah uh okay so I said fifteen to twenty five percent drops so if that happened today, if we started if we started to get some price, you know, pullbacks, which we kind of start, we, we did, and I really thought we were going to get that whenever we had that reversal day. Um, when was that? That was two days after Christmas. And then yesterday, you know, price looked like it was falling or, you know, starting to give way, but that it just, it just didn't happen. Um, we got some buyers come in and then price is moving up. Um this is also kind of, I think, correlated to the stimulus bill that's uh, being floated around right now. The House already passed it. They're trying to, uh, the House and the Senate passed it, uh, but they're trying to bump up the checks from 600 to 2,000. 
Um, so you're seeing a lot of volatility in Bitcoin and in the markets in general. Uh, but yeah, if we had a 15% drop from the high, it would be uh, right at 24 and then right at 21. So I said anything between 21 and 24 was a buy the dip. If we get a higher high, because we are on a 7, we could get an 8 and a 9 and then a pullback then. Uh, but we can let's look back at the hourly real quick, and I'll show you the CMF. Um, so here, we started to get the divergence. I was the bullish divergence. So we had price was. I'll draw it down here. So we have CMF going up. And then it was it started to get higher than this point right here, point two. The CMF started rising above that, but yet price was going slightly lower to kind of sideways, to kind of flat. So that's an indication that you know we're getting we're still we're getting good movement. We're getting buyers, and we could trend reverse um, here. On the C on the four hour wasn't as pronounced, but on the hourly it was. And then we can even check. So <clears throat> whenever I'm looking at candles, uh, we had a green two above a green one. All the trends are going up. The hourly told us to go up. This is a reversal candle. Um, we started to get so this green two didn't quite close above this high, but this three is above this high of twenty seven four seventy seven. If we close above that, we're most likely going to take this high out. I mean, I think we're, we're going to take this high out uh, just on the daily count. I mean, I think we're getting, getting 8, 9. Even though the RSI, which I talk about a lot, is oversold. I mean, is overbought. We're above this high here of 78.8. We're at 79. You know, this wick here was sell-off of emotion, people taking profit. Prices started to creep up. Those people are out. They could FOMO in for these last two days because they see that price is going up. Yeah, they took profit. You know, they sold lower than what price is most likely because they not not, not up the massive amounts of them bought the top. I mean, sold the top. So now they're like, oh man, price is going up. They're going to FOMO in. They think we're going to take this out. I think we're going to take this out. Eight, nine, that'll be New Year's Day uh, that we would probably get a new high, if not tomorrow. Uh, pretty much all the emotional buyers here are gone. That isn't even much much, much of a price movement. That's uh, from close to high. That's a little bit over 1,200. Let's see. But it's not percentage-wise, it's not large. Here to here? Yeah, less than 3%. So, man, we're... I'm, by tomorrow morning, we could most likely already be... That's, that would be, let's see... Four, five, six, seven. So whenever you wake up in the morning, six o'clock, or some people start their day that early, uh, four, five, six, we could be on a six count. We could get the high at the six, but there's going to be, uh, there's going to be noon buyers. So, um, let's see, six, seven, eight, nine. This could rally all the way till tomorrow evening on a nine count. And we could be well above this high. Uh, mayor multiple. Like I said, I mean, we went above it. We, we broke it. But once here, we had less than 35 days. And that's what I said. And we, we pretty much, the high here is now 33. This thing's trending up quickly. Um, it looks like it's bumping about four or $500 a day. So in two days, not in two days. In three days. This could be fifteen hundred dollars higher, as far as the where the this bullish top is, uh, which would be right around thirty four, thirty four five, or something like that. So, man, we could be at thirty thousand within the next, you know, three days. You know, we can get the nine, yeah, and we can still go above that nine. Um, you know, this is uncharted territory. So, I mean, as far as I mean, even though we are, so on this weekly, uh, in the past, whenever we got to 90, the following week we sold off. So you can look here. I think I showed this last time, 90, we sold off, 90, we sold off. But 
there's this is so early in the in the in the bull cycle. Um, there's so much, you know, momentum right now. You know, we could go another three thousand, so another ten to fifteen percent. You know, say we get to the just from where we're at now. Let's see. Yeah, fifteen percent would be thirty-two. We might not get quite there, but it could. Like I said, that mayor multiple would be at thirty-four-five. So, yeah, we could get there. We can go another fifteen percent from here. No problem. Ten to fifteen percent. No problem. Um, back in twenty seventeen, I mean in twenty thirteen, we got to look at the BLX index. Uh, twenty thirteen, I mean this got as high as ninety nine. Uh, the RSI did so. Um, RSI is can stay oversold. Uh, and overbought for an extended amount of time. Uh, just, I mean, it, once it's above 70, it gives you an indication, hey, I need to be aware. But, I mean, it's been how many weeks since we've been in an overbought and the momentum's just up. We're already on a, let's see, let me go back to the Coinbase chart. Um, let me hide these. Clean it up a little bit. Make sure I'm recording. Yeah, I'm recording. Uh... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, hold up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We could go up until the end of January. Nine count, then sell off. Who knows where we would be then? Um, yeah, we're, I mean, we're moving. Look at this. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's Bitcoin. But I wanted to show a correlation between this and the dollar. Uh, the dollar is not doing well. So, and this is also because, I mean, our government is printing massive amounts of money uh, with no end in sight. We are in a week, we are in a TD9. Uh, last time we got the 9 and we got a bounce. We could bounce as high as 91. Right now we're at 89.78 on the index. <clears throat> I said, this is major support right here, right? This is like a big channel that started... Uh, back in 2014, I mean, we could go here, right? This is a nine that never got retested. We didn't break the high strength. So this is definitely still in play all the way down to 84 on the index. But you can see this area is major support on the dollar, right? This right here, this area. Yeah, 89. So we're right there. We could get a bounce here up because um, we are on a nine. We could get a bounce up, but then in a couple weeks, we could, you know, one to four candle correction. Uh, and then we would go back lower. So, and like I said, there's correlation here between Bitcoin right now. This doesn't always hold, but at the moment, there is correlation, right? So let me go to the daily and I'll show you on this uh, correlation coefficient. Right here. So I'm going to put the dollar index in there. <clears throat> Apply. And anything above 70 is considered correlation. Right? So this is negatively, negatively correlated. Meaning Bitcoin's moving up as the dollar's going down. So, you know, here it was, there's no correlation. Here, you know, it started to build a correlation where 70 and above. So that's strong correlation. Um... Uh, so yeah, dollar gets weaker, Bitcoin's going up. Um, let's see how Bitcoin looks against the market in general. So the, let's do the S&P. <clears throat> Is there a correlation? Yep. So market's going up, Bitcoin's going up. And we just moved another $100. Yeah, we're probably going to break this. We're on, we're on the new count for the four and four hour chart. We had a nine, that nine's ran out. Um... We'll see what happens there. So, yeah, we're probably going to break this high. Um, funding rate is positive. Let's look on the daily, though. Yeah, so... Uh -huh. I do remember saying a couple weeks ago that the RSI was... Whenever we were, I believe, on the weekly, we were here, and I was like, that we're not going to go to 30,000. We were at 19. Man, we could go to 30,000. Uh... You know, we're, eventually we'll get a pullback. This isn't going to stay in this area. Eventually we're going to get a pullback. I mean, we might go to 30. 
uh, 15 to 25 percent pullback from there is still significant, right? It still gets us back to 25,000 as low as 22,000. So, you know, we might have a good run up another couple more weeks and then find a pullback. But like I said, this is uncharted territory. So right now it's probably just hold. Uh, that's probably the best strategy. Don't try to trade this because you can get burned. Think you're at the, you know, we're running out of steam and then we're keeping, we're, we're going. So yeah, mayor multiple here. Stock to flow. We're above the stock to flow now. Um, the model price is at 25. We're above that. Um, let's see. Um, we can look, like I said, the, what's fun to look at, cycle repeat. Haven't looked at this in a while. Cycle repeat says the high is going to be around almost half a million. Will that happen? Not sure. Uh, I think we'll get somewhere around the two hundred thousand dollar range, though. So <clears throat> we'll see how that goes. I mean, we're let's uh, we can something I haven't go, I haven't done before. Let's look at the news. So Coin Telegraph, BTC Times, a uh, good place to look at news. If you haven't kept up with the space, Ripple uh, got served uh, by the SEC that they um, issued. Uh, unlicensed security. They sold unlicensed security. Uh, the price of Ripple has been getting demolished. Um, it's all—it's been a scam. Ripple has been funding their operations with the token for the past, I don't know how many years, at least five years, uh, if not more. So you had Ripple. Ripple has, has price bias. People see it cheap, think it's going to go to the moon. It was 25 cents. Uh, they announced an airdrop. So an airdrop uh, is basically if you hold so many coins, they'll award you so many coins of the airdrop given it be a new token or uh, or they're going to fork it and you're going to get part of the forked coin. Um, but then airdrop was announced. I think it was Spark and I can't remember. I believe that's what it was called, Spark. So they announced it. Price ran up tremendously in two weeks, pretty much 100%. Um, or more than that. Let's see what it was. So if you would have bought here. Yeah, price ran up almost 200%. It closed the week out at over 100%. But now, uh, SEC, when did they... Um, let's see, when did they... Serve them with the papers? I don't know the exact date. But it was this week right here. Right, uh, week of Christmas, um, and then price started falling. So, whenever they serve them, I was like, okay, uh, Coinbase is going to go. They're trying to IPO uh, to become a publicly traded company. There was no way that they can IPO with an asset on their exchange that is deemed a security, unlicensed security. So, they were going to have to delist it. They announced that they were delist that they were going to stop. Um, supporting Ripple, I believe it's January, mid-January, I think it's the 19th of January, the 14th of January, let's see, let's see, it is, I think it was the 19th, I think it's the 19th of January, um, let's see, let's just Google it, Coinbase XRP, <clears throat> Coindesk, Coindesk is another good website uh, to get crypto news, Let's see, when did they say? Hmm, I thought, uh... Yep, January 19th. So, suspend trading, that's it. It's pretty much done. Um, this is most likely going to go sub 10 cents. Uh... I mean, it has no utility. They were using the coin to uh, fund the company. Ripple itself was not profitable, from my understanding. Uh, they would have gone out of business or been in deep trouble uh, financially years ago if it wouldn't have been for the token. So, um, what else is in the news real quick? One of the, um, let's see. Let's see on BTC Times. Yeah, that's about it. Um, we can look at the coin uh, coin market cap. 
there's a there's a website called Coin Market Cap. I use uh, CoinCap.io. Uh, Ripple is still in the top ten. This will drop. Uh, Litecoin had passed it up earlier today, but looks like it took its position back. Let's go over a couple other things. I had talked about parts. Um, carparts.com a couple days ago. At the time, I couldn't remember exactly when I entered the trade. I'll look it back. It was the 22nd that I entered the trade um, here. Um, this was from the morning. Um, I had had a set to buy if it had went over, I believe, the hourly... Yeah, here. If it had opened above the hourly to set a buy, and it did. So that entered the trade. And then I saw that this area here at the time had not been back tested or not been retested the nine. So that was my target. And basically, whenever it got there, I also had a limit to sell and it sold. So the profit there was whenever it opened. I believe it was, it wasn't. Anything crazy, but it was 6%. But sometimes, hey, you take small wins. Uh, every little bit counts, right? So here, it went to 13.22, I believe. Right around there. It was, it was right around 6%. So that was that one. That's what I saw as far as um, if it was a good trade or not. You had, you had the CMF rising as price was kind of sideways. You can look at the four hour two here. Price had been falling and the CMF was rising. Um, and then I believe the RSI was also severely oversold. Yeah, see? And it was just starting to, it was also rising as price was falling. So I was like, that's a trade that needs, that, that's, there's an opportunity there. Um, took it, made 6%. Um, something else I had been watching those weed stocks, they're not, they're like almost breaking out, but they're not breaking out. So here a couple of days ago, you had a test of the 30 MA on the hourly, didn't quite do it, broke down, didn't quite close above it, broke down. Eventually these will take off again. I think there's massive upside to them long term, um, especially if the house, I mean, if the house and the Senate are both, um, uh, Democrats rather than Republicans, they're going to push this through. Um, I take no stance on that. I'm just saying it, it, if it's, if the Senate is, is, uh, democratic as well, then there's going to be, um, they're probably going to push the rest of that more act through, uh, whenever that comes up to vote on the Senate floor. And that's going to push the price up tremendously. Um, hundred percent, 200 percent. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it rallies again back to its levels in 20, 18, I mean, 2018, uh, 100, 300, this thing got up to, you're going to see a massive surge. It's going to get through all this previous uh, support and resistance levels. Um, you have a Fibonacci retracement on here. The first one's at 40. That passes, it's most likely going to get to 40, uh, which is about four, 400% from here, 4X. 300% 4X. Um, what else? Oh, lumber. So lumber's starting to go back up. I made a comment. Uh, that um, another stimulus bill goes through. Uh, you're most likely going to see lumber prices go higher. I know that's a ticker. LBS. Oh, here it is. Lumber futures. Right. So here we go. We had all the stimulus money going to the... Oh, you had trade, you know, kind of get haltered, uh, get halted and hard to get lumber. Price goes up, price comes down aggressively. You get a nine bounce, you get another stimulus bill, all that money going in through the through the system um, into the financial markets. Um, we're most likely going to get a higher high. So, is it time to buy lumber uh, if you want to build a house or something like that or a small project? It's going to be high. We're on an eight. We're going to hit a nine. We're most likely going to break this high on lumber, which was 945. And I think lumber, this number is based off of, it's like a pallet or something like that. Um, let's see, lumber features. 
forget exactly. Let's look at the CME, how it's just priced. So, I forget. It's, it's like based off the palette. And I thought it said it here on the CME features. Oh, settlements. Here we go. Contract specs, maybe. I knew I'd read it somewhere. Here we go. So contract unit. That's uh, two. Yeah. Dollars per thousand board feet. So. That's the price quotation. Anyway. It's going to go, I think we'll break this high. We'll get an 8, get a 9 rally. We're going to break this 9.45 high for lumber. Um, uh, what else can we go? We're going to look at oil. I know I had put a price um, analysis out for oil real quick. Oil. Yeah, so I said in this channel, price target for the channel is $55. Um, 49 was the target based on this resistance area back here did we get it was 4980 we didn't quite get there but we had a pullback on the 8 consolidation we could go higher um, i said that was through let's see this can go through 2021 i'll i'll draw this out all the way i mean we're not in the channel anymore but the price analysis was for the year. I'll do half the year. So, yeah. Nothing there. We'll, I mean, gas prices have gone up, but we're kind of getting some resistance here. Uh, we get a break of this 49.80. We'll reevaluate. Um, what else can we look at? Oh, um, let's look at uh, silver. Silver and gold are starting to move, especially if we get more um, stimulus and money flowing through the system <clears throat> and devaluation of the dollar, dollar weak, or have dollar weakness with all this money printing. Uh, silver is at a Fibonacci level of, well, let me flip this around. Actually, no, this, that was right. That was the right way to draw it. This way. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, if you're looking at past price, your Fibonacci retracement goes here at the top. Your bottom goes, your zero goes out on the right. Your, if you want to remember it, if you're drawing a retracement, um, you would, your, your one's always going to be on the left. Your zero's always going to be on the right. If you're drawing it uh, top down or down up, um, so, like, the retracement here would be, if I wanted to do an example real quick, it would be, let's see, where would the rally break? I would say we broke it here. I mean, there's so much consolidation in silver. If you would look at the prior low to the high, but kind of where it rallied. So, let's just, we would pick it here. I'll draw it. It's the wrong way, but I can reverse it real quick. All right, there we go. So you would look at the high. Not quite there. Right here to where the low would be before that rally. And that would be right there. So um, if I'm looking at this, and I'm trying to look at current price, which is at 26. We have a resistance level at 28.60. Did we find resistance there? The high for this week was 29.86, but we closed at 28.27. So that's below that 
Next level of resistance would be 33.16. Um, I had it drawn the other way because I wanted to see what the potential high could be. So let me bring that back up. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was also, it's also an area of um, resistance here on this Fibonacci that I'm drawing. I think we're going to get back to this high, this 47. I think there's more upside on silver than there is gold. I think we'll double. Um, or get pretty close to double doubling. Um, if we, Like I said, if we look at the gold to silver ratio that I pointed out, whenever it breaks... Oh, gold divided by silver. Enter. Whenever it broke... Whenever it breaks this area right here, whenever it goes past this 6970 area, you're going to see silver outperform gold. Um, we can look at it on the just on a short time frame, gold, real quick. Uh, this week it's up 0.3%. Silver would be above that. Yeah, 2%. So it's already starting to outperform. Um, long term, silver. We have all of our trend lines going up. Look, this looked promising, but then we had a reversal, kind of like what we saw um, on Bitcoin, actually. On the weekly, did we hit it? No, not so much. Um, on the daily, we saw it, kind of like that, right? But it was on the weekly time frame. So, if I'm looking at it here, we had nice price run up. We had daily and hourly uh, candles close above this high. That would have told you to go all in. I mean, you're still all in. You could have exited. Um, I mean, the silver is a lot more volatile than, than gold as far as whenever it swings. Um, so last week was week of the 21st. So I'm looking at the 21st. Here was that. I mean, you had a reversal candle on the... Uh, on the daily as well. Big price candle down, almost down 4%. Then we started to rally back up. But we're kind of in a channel here, right? And, you know, once we break this, this uh, $26.77. So if, say we get a close above 27 next couple of days or weeks, that's going to be good for silver. We most likely will go back to this area. Oh, that's going to be a resistance area. Again, right around 28. We break through that. We're going to go to, you know, this Fibonacci level 34, 40. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll most likely get some get some momentum and start going up. Um, let's see. RSI is down here. We still got room to run, especially on the daily probably. Yeah, almost. Are we oversold on the four hour? Nope, but it's turning up. Nothing too crazy here. Um, but I like silver. Um, there's another trade, uh, Cinemark I had been watching and Cinemark is what you call, is in what you call a, uh, ascending triangle. So you can kind of see it. I'll show you right here. So there's a descending triangle, which is kind of, be uh, bearish. And then there's an ascending triangle. So I would draw it here, draw this out here. And then I'm going to draw another arrow. I'll draw it down. I'll draw this one down. There. And then you draw, you draw an arrow up right there. I'm not going to extend this out. Like that. I'll maybe fix this a little bit. Right there. So that's an ascending triangle. And you can see that we broke it. It was a try to rally, broke down. Try to rally, broke down. You can see it again on the four hour. That's relatively clean. It's kind of higher on the four hour, right? Um, and then on the hourly, it'll be even higher. higher so yeah, so... But that, that structure is there, right? So on the daily, we, we broke it, 
Okay. This was here. We had a run up. We were above our 30 MA, right? You could have taken this trade all the way back here on the 23rd, right when the market opened last Wednesday. And then you would be up. You wouldn't be, I don't know if you'd be up a lot. Let's see. Yeah, 6%, 5%, not bad. Uh, but if you would have noticed this pattern, um, you could, you know, as it developed over the past couple of days since the 3rd, since the beginning of December, uh, you could say as soon as it breaks it, you know, we're going to go higher. What's the target? The target is the height of this triangle. The target is this. Target is 2133. It's a little bit short of what our target is um, from this daily TD sequential of 2263, but that's a pretty good return, right? So you could have waited, not not took the hourly IMA. You could have waited for the break of this triangle here, and then you would get 20%, right? 22%, potentially 30%. So... Uh, now, if you wanted to be even more even more conservative, you can go to the four hour right now. You could have drawn this maybe a little bit higher. It's going to give us a higher target though, right? So draw this a little bit higher. Move this triangle. Move this uh, a little bit farther out. Here. And you would not be in the trade yet. You would wait. We're on a seven. 8, 9. Now this can go 8, 9 tomorrow. Find resistance here and then fail back down and then come back down to this support level. Uh, these triangles break about 70% of the way through from, what you, from where you would uh, draw them. So I believe the sending, tri uh, sending triangles are 70% of the way. So this would be 54 bars. We're at 33 bars. Um, 33 divided by 54, that's 61%, so we're not quite at 70% of the way. Uh, but then that's where they would break, right? Um, let's see what the RSI looks like. Not over, not overbought. Not overbought. I think the day the hour is probably about, no, not overbought either. So we're in a good range. We can look at the CMF real quick. And if you notice, if you've been watching for a little while, there's certain indicators that I use. T sequential is my base. I'm looking for patterns, candles. So this candle was a reversal candle. Candles take precedence over patterns. Uh, so that would have told you reversal, but I mean you kind of stay in your trade if there's some good indic if there's indicators that are trending upwards, showing you support. Um, you can stay in your trade. You know the CMF is start is rising up. That's okay. There's no you know divergence or hidden divergence there that would get you out of anything. Um, but yeah, so on the four hour, you would have waited um, until this breaks. What's the target? The target's going to get us higher. It's probably going to get us right where that 23 is. Yep, right there. So if you you would wait for the four hour, you'd get right at 2257, which is close to where our uh, target is anyway for the TD sequential nine that wasn't tested, retested, and you would have a potential return of. 25%. So between 20 and 30%, depending on what your setup is, where are you wrong? Where am I wrong? Right? I'm wrong at the one hour. If I entered whenever the one hour told me to enter, I'm wrong here. So even at worst case scenario, if I would have entered at the high of this candle, right now, bare minimum, if we get a close, I'm going to make maybe say 2 to 3% because it doesn't, um, it's not going to quite... Um, you're not going to quite get out right when, you know, it, it touches this because you're waiting for a close below the line. So say two to two to three percent worst case scenario uh, for a potential uh, thirty. I mean twenty twenty to thirty percent return. Now here, where am I wrong? I'm wrong at the bottom of this. Whenever I close below it, right? So I would have been, you know, say I would have waited. What was my risk there? My risk was one percent, one to two percent, and that's, you know. You do your risk management that way, whatever your entry is. If you took a $100 trade on this, uh, 
you don't want to lose more than one or two percent of your total account. If your total account is a hundred, you couldn't lose more than one or two dollars. Uh, but that would have been right in your range, so you, I could have been okay for a potential, uh, you know, twenty percent, because that was the target. Well, more than that. Right there, 38%. So you're risking 1% to 2% for 40%, potentially. Uh, that uh, risk to return um, would be, I'll draw that out. So um, traditionally, traders would, or institutions want a favorable trade, and they want to be 5 to 1 on the return of risk uh, to reward. So I'm looking for that so I can draw it for you. Oh, here we go, long position. So if you would have entered here, and my target is way up here, and then my stop would have been right at this here, my risk reward is 30 to one. You take that trade. Um, they want to be five to one, right? So five to one would have been, you know, pretty much where we're at already. So for the risk reward ratio, um, I sometimes take trades as low as three to one, um, depending on what it is and how it looks. But um, yeah, this would have been a no brainer. I'm risking one to two percent for potential. 38 to 40 percent. When am I going to get there? I could potentially get there in um, whenever I took the trade, which would have been on the 23rd. You know, maybe I break, consolidate. I mean, a, a respectable time frame would have been. I'm on. I was on a seven. No, I was on. A, I, I it was a recount. So maybe within the next four to eight weeks. I can get back to 22, you know, I can, I can see that, you know, what would I say, 30 something percent return? If I would have waited to here, 25, but if I would have entered on the hourly, you know, 40, almost 40% in a four to eight week time frame. Right, because the TD sequential can give you another nine count. Uh, well, we can get there much more aggressively. So I'd say four to eight weeks. Then a month or two, you could potentially have a forty percent return. Not bad. And that's how you would do that. I mean, that's how I'll, that's how I'm looking at this trade. Uh, within the next four to eight weeks, I'm going to have approximately about a forty percent return, thirty to forty percent return, unless something gives way here. Uh, it could be sooner, right? It could be in the next six days. Because uh, tomorrow's going to be a four, five, let's just do it, the regular count. By the seventh, potentially have a 40% return. Um, so yeah, that's all I wanted to show. There's a lot of stuff. Um, a lot on Bitcoin, a lot on lumber, gold. That's kind of all what I'm watching right now. There isn't really any other trades. Uh, we kind of came down. So yeah, I mean, trading's dynamic. We had a nice green candle, now we got a red candle, but we did have a nine, right? Boom, nine consolidation. So that's good. If we have a nine consolidation, we can still get a pullback. Oh yeah, so this is something I've never shown yet. How do I know how far I could potentially pull back one to four candles? Uh, how do I do that? So here's how I do it. I'll get an arrow. And the way it works is you count on the close. So this closed here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count from the close uh, down. So like there's a high here. Now these highs are, that's relatively close. The high was 27,995 and the close was 27,986. So that's pretty much the same, right? But it's one, uh, this is where the close is. So I'm going to go one, the open is since... 
you know, these candles are continuous. It's going to open and close at the same price, pretty much. Um, right, so this one closed at 27986 It should open at the same price. It does. It's a penny off. Um, but so it's here. So this would be, so I'm starting from here. I would go one. And then the next uh, area is two. Right, it's the high of this, and then what's the next area? Three, four. That's where I could go. So I go uh, one, two, three, four. This high right here. That's where it could. That's where the. That's where it could find support, right here. And look where it's finding support. It's finding support right here, right at the high at the seven. That's the way the TD sequential works. That's where I could potentially find su support off of this nine. And that's exactly where it found support. The high was 27,699. The low was 27,700. So this TD sequential on a 27, almost $28,000 asset got you within a dollar, which is a percentage. I mean, that's unheard of. Like, you know, I'm going to tell you where I could potentially find support. Uh, 27,700, right? Is that what it was? Yeah. I got you within, I mean, that's, what is that? Uh, the percentage is crazy. No, not 100. <laughs> 2,700. So I got you within, I mean, yeah, it's like better than a thousandth of a percent. It's crazy. Uh, but that's how it works. I didn't feel like doing that math, but it's better It's better than a thousandth of a percent. Uh, so, or right at a thousandth of a percent. So, now we're getting some, you know, now we're getting price bouncing. Uh, could it go lower than that? Yeah, if it breaks down lower than that. Still one to four candle, you know, correction. Um, the support is here at 26,574. That's a big, that's a big, big jump. Um, let's look at the 15 minute. I usually don't like to go farther down than that, but no, there's no exhaustion. I mean, there's here, right? These weren't back tested, but I don't put much weight on these because uh, they're 15 minute charts. I don't trade 15 minute charts. I trade hourly, four hour, weekly, daily. Um, so yeah, we can get some consolidation as soon as we get a, Green number closing above a prior green number closing above the nine. We could get another price run up. RSI is overbought area. It's coming down. Once it closes below 70, it could crash. But we could come here. We could find support, bounce up, which we, we went exactly where the TD sequential said we would go. Uh, and then we could find support and go up higher and take out this all time high. Um, Yeah, so that's about it. This video is long enough. It's got to be over 30 minutes. Uh, went over a little bit of news. Ripple's a scam. Uh, lumber's going to go higher, looks like. Gold, silver. Silver's your better play. Stimulus checks go through. Uh, it's going to pump more money into the market. It's good for Bitcoin. Good for gold. Good for silver. Good for the stock.